Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you finally with some more 40k content. We've been in a little bit of a 40k drought here on the channel as there hasn't been a hell of a lot of game releases from Games Workshop in relation to 40k in the last couple of weeks. Obviously they've been focusing on the old world and very much so have I. But now I finally got my hands on the beautiful new Dark Angels box set. It is unfortunately sent to me quite a bit late so I didn't get a chance to do any video for it on its like pre-order day. But a couple days late is better than I guess no video at all. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint up Belial, Master of the Deathwing. He is one of my favourite characters and a character that I have run in our armies before in the old resin version so it is nice to finally get a beautiful plastic version a new rendition quite a big upgrade if you ask me uh, get him on the tabletop uh, looking pretty swish not taking up too much of your time so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it teaches you guys a little bit how to paint deathwing armor or how to paint belial himself before i get into the video it's for a huge thank you to all of my active patrons you guys are literally the lifeblood of this channel that you guys cannot do continue doing what i am doing so thank you from the bottom of my heart if you're interested in getting involved with that there are links in the description below access to private discord server and an extra video every single week are just two of the awesome benefits for becoming a member another thing i want to bring up is i am fighting to the nails to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year that's my crazy goal but in 2024 100,000 subscribers to incentivize me getting there i'm going to be giving away a titan this year how it works is if i get to 65,000 subscribers by the end of the year i will give away a warhound if i get to 85,000 subscribers i will give away a reaver and if i get to 100,000 subscribers i'm going to give away a warlord titan so if that's something you're interested in being involved in all you have to do is subscribe okay guys without further ado let's get stuck in to belial and here we have belial master of the deathwing an absolute behemoth of a miniature these days like it's a huge step up from his previous miniature and his previous miniature is quite nice too to be fair but this is just a whole different league obviously they've been stepping up their game with a lot of the character models making them have a kind of a bigger presence on the tabletop and i for one i'm here for that i really enjoy that aesthetic they're like looking across the sea of green in your army or the sea of bone and wanting those characters to immediately jump out of the table you know where the danger is you know where the coolest character is that's definitely working with this guy so i got the model sprayed black and then i gave him a quick spray of some gray seer spray and from here we are going to start working up the color so obviously he's wearing quite a lot of robes as is tradition with the dark angels so we're going to go in with some dark angels green contrast funny that and we're going to very carefully apply this to his robes the reason i say carefully is uh, we're not going to touch his armor with paint yet we're actually going to let the shade do a lot of the work and then just do one simple layer job after the fact in order for that to work we cannot stain the plates of the armor from the spray that we used we can't cover with dark angels or get any of the metallics on it or the reds or any of the other colors. So you want to be quite careful whilst applying your base coats with this particular model. I know it's not the norm. Usually we get to be quite sloppy with our, our base coats, but unfortunately here, just going to need you guys to take your time. Just be careful. The dark angels green that is used as a contrast is one I tend to kind of avoid. It's not my favorite contrast at all. I feel like it has very little kind of contrast to it actually and i don't think it sits particularly well on a miniature it's it, to me it's just not a very nice color but dark angels robes are considered to be quite dark i will talk a little bit about maybe punching that color up a little bit more personally after the video is said and done obviously i'm going to try and make it as true to the original model as possible but i think for my personal use after the video is done i'm going to go back to the miniature and probably pump up the color just a little bit Volopus pink was then used for the inside of the cape. Now I'm not usually one for doing the uh, the two-tone capes. I find it kind of annoying to do them and a bit weird. Usually I would just do the same color inside and out. But I think the Volopus pink is quite important on a miniature like this. Otherwise you would literally just have a sea of green cloak. It would be like 90% of the surface of the model, which is not exactly what you want. Wildwood was then brought in for a very quick step. So we're going to use the scabbard or sheath of his sword and his dagger and then the strap on his storm bolter. Literally the only parts that need a bit of brown is the only leather bits showing at all. Even his belt is obviously ceramite. Once again, you see I'm using quite a fine pointed brush to apply the contrast because I am being careful. It's been a couple of weeks since we've managed to get some 40k content on the channel, so it is nice to come back to it. 
even though I'm getting the withdrawal shakes from the old world as we speak. Blood Angels Red was then brought in and used for the casing of the Storm Boulder. I love a good boulder uh, st uh, casing being red. It's just, it's just beautiful. And then there is, you need to take your time and you need to look at pictures of the miniature online because he's got a lot of iconography that has a little bit of red in it. So a lot of the swords going through his like shoulder pauldron or his like headdress thingy has a little bit of red to it. And then the, the, his tilt shield has a big red symbol on it as well. So you want to take your time, find all those little bits and pieces and try and get it done with some red being as careful as possible. This is what I mean by careful. So this whole motif thing on top of his head, just the sword going down the middle of it is red. And a lot of it around it is going to be white feathers, which is not something we want to hit with red contrast. That'll be a bit of a pain to, uh, to tidy up a little bit later down the line. But practice makes perfect and you will get there. So as you can see, here's all the red sections I was talking about. We also did the strap across the cloak in Volobus Pink and the little badge on the skeleton on the ground is also done in that Volobus Pink. Now it's time to start uh, knocking in some metallics. So we're going to grab some Lead Belger and basically cover pretty much all of the metallics on this entire miniature with a base coat of Lead Belcher. There's of course some gold bits on the hilt and pommel of his sword. And then of course, once again, those designs going around on his shoulder pad and up on top of his head and stuff. There's lots of gold filigree and design and stuff in there as well. So we've got to make sure to get a nice clean coat of that after the lead belcher is done. Obviously I assembled this model entirely before painting. Was that a good idea? I'm not 100% sure. The skeleton on the front on the ground did indeed get in the way a little bit, but he is built into the base. So you could very easily just leave him off that little extra bit for now while you're painting and glue him on later on. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to record for me to show you guys. But perhaps it's what I would do if I was doing it just for my personal use. You would just leave him off that little tactical rock. Because all that detail is attached to that. And just paint that up separately. Obviously getting the blade of the sword in, gold and silver. Okay, so we have all the metallics on as a base coat now. We're going to jump over to Black Templar. And this is just for another few small bits. So the pipe work that goes underneath armor. I always like doing that in black. I also like doing all of the soft seals. And by soft seals, I mean where armor bends. There's usually like a, a ridged set of uh, section of armor. In my head, that's like the rubbery seal kind of thing. So I always like to do those in black as well. It just helps to break up the monotony of kind of power armor to the solid color the whole way through. I know that's not the case with this particular miniature, but standard tactical Marines and stuff have that, you know, it's all blue or it's all yellow. So I like having the black to break it up. And this is just following through. So it matches in with the rest of the force. Some Gulliman flesh was then brought in for the like five millimeters of face or skin that is showing on this entire miniature. And that's it base coated, so that was that was quick. <laughs> so I do believe we finally have all of the base coats on the miniature. And it's time for the magic shade. So for this we're going to go into Seraphim Sepia and we're going to wash the entire miniature head to toe with Seraphim Sepia. Now, this is where we need to be really careful because we do not want pooling. And I know I've said it before, you know, obviously make sure you don't pool, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's way more important on a miniature like this to make sure no pooling occurs on the armor. If a little bit pulls in the cloak or the gun or any of the it doesn't matter, but the armor panels need to be that crisp, smooth bone color. So like I said, I'm just gonna go in and do one layer job on the armor and then call it done. I don't want this model to be years and years of painting time. There's obviously 15 other Deathwing Terminators in this box set that I do not have the time to spend weeks painting each and every one of them with a bunch of different layer paints and highlight paints. So I'm going to show you, like I said, a very quick, easy and accessible way of getting the armor done. I have done it on mass. I've done a Deathwing Terminator before on the channel. I was just involved, you know, sepia washing a couple of dry brushes. That won't really work here because he obviously got his guns and capes and all that kind of stuff that will get wrecked by that. And the fact that he's a character, so you kind of want to spend a little bit more time on him and make him look as nice as possible. Hence why I'm going to go in with the layer job here. So here he is all washed up. I've obviously put some texture paste and some shade on the base as well. Give me that Martian scheme that I go for for all of my loyalist space marines. And then I grab some screaming skull. Now I'm working off of a wet palette, so it is thinned down a little bit with just some water. And as you can see, I'm very carefully going on to the armor. 
I'm not doing it slowly though. I'm gonna power through and get the entire thing done in a couple of minutes. But one coat is all you need. It's gonna keep the warmth of the armor. The sepia will kind of bleed through a little bit and show that kind of, like I said, the warmth. But the bone will kind of smoothen it all out. And I think bring us up to that beautiful Deathwing color scheme. As you can see, because we haven't made any mistakes, we've been nice and neat and tidy. This layer job goes on so nice. If there was red or green or anything like that, we'd have to go coat after coat after coat of this to try and cover it up. Then you run the risk of it turning chalky or any of those other horrible things that you do not want to happen. I just love how smooth that's applying. Like it's almost invisible to the naked eye what it's doing, but it is making a huge difference. It is bizarre to have a Space Marine character like this covered in so much robes and obscuring so much of his beautiful armor. Like I do wonder how beautiful his chest piece is underneath that, but instead he's got a dish towel wrapped around him. Okay, time to go in and uh, highlight that dish towel now. So Vulcan Green was the first one that I grabbed to highlight this. Like I was saying at the beginning, I wanted to try and get a pop of like contrast or some nice color there. So I'm going to go for a two stage highlight. I'm going to start with Vulcan Green and just layer up all the cloth. Now we've layered up cloth and stuff before. I've talked to you guys a million times about it. All you know, you're hitting all the raised areas and keeping all the folds and creases nice and dark from that shade, which will add a lot of contrast and make the model look really nice. but I still think it's very dark. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think the cloth on Dark Angels is too dark? Would you like to, to pump it up with a brighter color? Or do you think it looks really nice, that subtle color, so focus your attention more on the armor and the weapons of Belial as opposed to just his little bit of cloth? Genuinely curious. So let me know in the comments below if you have an opinion on this. From here, we're gonna jump up to Wa Flesh and do another layering paint job. This time, of course, less, just a little bit of a highlight on the much sharper areas. It will punch that color up a little bit more, make it a little bit more noticeable, but still, I like kept it in that muted Dark Angels kind of tone. Which just isn't really my style. I always do like a pop of color. That's why I lavish so much attention on things like his Storm Boulder in this particular paint job. Is that big the bright flash of red really sang to me. As you can see, taking my time going around those areas. Once again, the bone is all, armor is all done now, so we do not want to hit that with anything. As you can see, following down through with those higher points. And leaving all the recesses nice and dark. As you can see, it is a nice looking cape. And I think I did a fairly decent job getting it layered up. Okay, so we have the, the bone armor done and the cloak done. Well, the outside of the cloak, obviously. We're now going to move on to the inside of the cloak. We're going to use Screamer Pink. And just like we did with the green, we're just going to layer up that fabric. All the uh, raised areas are going to get a nice coat of Screamer Pink. All the folds and recesses are going to be left alone, which will give us that nice contrast, nice bit of shade under the cloak. And obviously this is, I'd say, almost more important than the back of the cape as it's the kind of the front on profile of the miniature, which is where most people will look at him from. He will obviously sit in my cabinets facing outwards so and no one will see the cape. That's okay, we can live with that. I think even if the cape had a big giant kind of dark angel symbol embossed across the back of it that you could have done with a spot of color, I think would have made a huge difference. It's now time to work up those uh, scabbards, sheets, and uh, rifle straps. We're going to use Katachan flesh with this. I've talked about this before. If you don't have a pot of Katachan flesh and you like layering up things like leather, with a nice rich brown gold head, head and get yourself a pot of that. It really does work a treat. Quick and easy. And of course going in with the scabbard as well. Not a lot of brown, a lot of no straps or buckles or belts or anything like this on this miniature like there normally is on 
Space Marines and any other character really. So it was just, like I said, a very quick job for the Catachan Flesh. It's now time to move over to Iron Breaker, and this is another important color. We are going to take our time with this, and we are going to highlight all the metallics, both silver and gold, with a spot of Iron Breaker. It's going to make all those colors pop immensely. As you can see, I'm going in once again, fine pointed brush, and kind of less is more with highlights and metallics. You just want the edges and stuff to kind of pop with a little bit of sharp color. And that kind of gun oil sepia style color will work in all the recesses and stuff like that so you can leave that alone and the uh, the style that i use where i highlight both the silver and the gold with the same color is just it's so fast when you get to this stage you literally just jump from the silver up to the gold and highlight that really quickly no effort straight in a little bit of a dot here and there it takes about two seconds to get something like a storm bolter layered up and i think it looks fantastic so of course we're going to follow through and do that on the rest of the the model all the gold bits whether it's his fancy belt buckle or whether it's the pommel of his sword all of it still needs to get layered up and of course we're going to go up the blade as well with a nice neat coat of bright silver okay after all of the metallics have been layered we're going to go over to the red we're going to use jump up to straight up to the evil sun scarlet and add a little uh highlight to the red parts so of course his gun casing will get a nice coat. This was a very enjoyable gun to paint. I know it's a bit of a weird thing to say, but sometimes certain weapons just hit you right and uh, you just have a good time painting them. So for me, his Storm Bolter is a 10 out of 10 sculpt for a, a weapon. And I very much enjoyed painting it up. Moving over to Wildwood Flesh and layering up all of those feathered parts across the miniature. And there is more than you think. Obviously, you've got his back piece and you've got his big shoulder trim and stuff like that. And you want to make sure you get them done nice and neatly. Of course, we're going to move over to Warp Lightning. Now, I decided to go for an unnatural, uh, kind of a demonic green glow on the fire. I think it stands out and screams more 40k than just a traditional little fire coming out of the desert it doesn't really make a hell of a lot of sense to me whereas if this guy's off fighting zinch demons or something which dark angels have been known to do from time to time um then of course i think a malevolent green fire burning from the ground is is very cool burning up that old skeleton Once I said again, it is a very quick step. I'm not going to do anything else to that flames whatsoever. I'm not going to try and layer it up green. I love the way it turned out. I love the way it looks. And I still think it's quite muted, so it's not going to take your attention away from Belial at all. And then we have two very quick steps. Cadian flesh and Kislev flesh across his face. And of course, there's very little face showing. So with the Cadian flesh tone, we kind of highlighted the entire face. I don't mean the entire face is in both sides of the face, but then with Kislev Fesh, we just highlighted the right hand side to give that appearance of kind of light coming in from the right. And left the left side nice and dark and cowled. And this is my finished Belial miniature ready for the tabletop. I'd love to know what you guys think about him. And are you excited to see more of the Dark Angels releases painted up on the channel? We of course have the rest of that new box set and I'm sure the rest of those cool new units will be along at some time in the near future. I took a couple of high res images of him and then of course I had to, it would have been just rude not to, I had to give a, a shout out to his boss and his boss's boss. So I got a couple of pictures with all three of them together and I think as a combined unit it looks pretty gnarly. I love it so much. I'm definitely going to need to get more Dark Angels painted soon. Okay, guys, and there we have it. One finished Belial ready for the tabletop. Uh, personally, I would like to take the cloth up uh, a good bit brighter. I would like that to have some real punch to it. Obviously, the examples they give in the box set and the artwork codex and on uh, the online has it that really kind of dark and 
kind of dreary green. There's not really any pop to it. So I kind of kept it that way because obviously traditional Dark Angels painters want to play, paint it the traditional Dark Angels way. But after this video is done, I think I will go back in and add a little pop of extra color. Take that green one step higher. Apart from that though, I am very happy with the final result and I hope you guys are as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, make sure to subscribe and make sure to ask me any questions you want in the comments below and I'll go back to each and every one of you guys. Every one of those steps helps push the video out to more people and helps the channel grow. So thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.